what is up? Welcome to the crib. Uh, this is what, I, well, I'm trying to make it into the crib, but as you can see, there's shit everywhere. Okay, guys, what is going on? Uh, it's been a while since I've done a kind of, you know, a decently, decent length video, but this is exactly what this is going to be, so if you've been waiting for it, you came to the right place, right? Because I'm going to go through everything in this video. If you wonder what I mean by everything, I mean the rod, reels, tackle, like everything, literally everything. I'm going through it in this video, and so I'm just going to get started straight away. First thing we had was up on the wall there. This is an Amu Garcia Vendetta uh, rod. I have on this a Daiwa Crossfire, uh, the Daiwa Crossfire 300 3BI. Really nice, got some six pound test on here. Really nice, uh, so the gear. Underneath, a Bugassia spinner. This is the Costa, really nice. Like, you know, it kind of works nice, but in deep water that you cannot really use this in shallowness. Uh, okay, this is a trace that I bought off of Wish, but you know, it works treat, so there's no point getting rid of it. Okay, we're gonna swap out today. We are gonna be swapping out uh, this reel. Okay, we're gonna swap this reel out for this reel that's on the ground here. There's a Rambler. It's got some 30 pound line on which is perfect for pike. I know, you know, it's pretty resistant to some bites because I did actually manage to get one on this line without a trace. Uh, okay, will it focus? Yes, thank you. Okay, we're going to take this uh, line off. We are not going to keep the uh, spinner on. We are going to swap to something else, which I will show you in a second. But let's just go in depth a little bit to the rod. It's so nice. It's uh, to secure the reel, you'll see in a second, but it's kind of got like this ratchet. Here we go, see Jake said he loves the colour scheme on this, which I do as well. It's black and red. Uh, got this nice little handle there. And it can reach all the way back. And on the back end of the rod here, we've got this lovely... It's got some dirt on it, but just ignore that. Really cool. Uh, real, also very nice. But the rod's where it's at, okay? It's made out of uh, the Intracarbon, which is like a Bugatti is kind of little trademark kind of thing. Uh... And it's a very light carbon. It's so well. This thing's so nice, and you know it also helps. Every little dink on this rod will be directed straight to the handle, so you'll feel every little thing on this rod, which is amazing. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the uh, tackle, and we'll set this up afterwards. Okay, well this is a great camera angle. You'll see behind me the lawnmower and such, but just ignore them. Just concentrate on the rod. It better focus on me because if it doesn't, I'll be fuming. So I've got the Fjall Raven bag. Oh, cop this not long ago. It's kind of a better alternative to the bag I was already using, which you guys, you guys will have seen in the videos. It's like a little seat chair. Uh, we're gonna just be taking all the stuff off this. Uh, we'll start off by just biting this line off. Oh, lines off. And uh, there you go. There's a spinner with a trace on it. The action on this reel is amazing. I, I have to just, you know, point it out because, oh my god, I love it. Okay, the line is finally on the catcher. Now, this is where I'll show you. Okay, hopefully it's focused. If it isn't, hey ho, but we're going to take the ratchet thing and twist. It's not nice, that sounds. And there you go, your, your reel's off. It's got a really nice little catch right here. And this is the first time I'm ever going to be putting my Rambler reel onto this. So I'm going to go pick it up. Okay, so we got this um, reel, and it's really nice now that I, you know, got some grease on it and stuff. Uh, but it's kind of long, uh, but it, it's a really, really nice reel. It's gonna take a bit of a, more of an effort to get it on to the rod, but we get in there. So now, this is, you can tighten the reels so much on this. It's so impressive, I didn't realize how good this actually was. It works so well, and uh, yeah, this is a perfect little. Now that I got this on, it's like so nice for like a little jigging rod. Perfect. Um, that was easy, as you all saw. But uh, yeah, let's get this thing spooled, because I need to get some actual stuff on here. I'm gonna f obviously now, guys. I'm gonna flip this back over so that the reel doesn't go both ways. Loosen the drag, so then I can thread this all the way through. And this line is very thick, 30 pound resistance, which I don't need, but I 
like to use it just in case something big gets on. And this is the reel that I use for pike. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to actually just be out of the frame for a second now because the fact I'm spooling this whole thing. Okay. It's now completely threaded. I kept saying spooled. I don't know why, but hold up. Okay, I think the drag's fine on his side. I don't have a problem with that. But let's let's get this thing completely ready now. I hate putting this thing on. The, there's a pram there. That's perfect. Oh, the line is so hard to bite through because of how strong it is. We have a perfect view now. All right, thank God. Okay, so. This uh, trace has a little bit of line left on it, one sec. Okay, no, I can't get this line off, it's annoying, but we're gonna take the ABU gas here. We're gonna take it off. Oh, I've never caught anything on this, but I look forward to catching something on it. Really nice, thank you very much, Jake, for your um, little gift. We're gonna keep this trace, because it's useful. Now, into the bag. Now, I will show you everything in just a short while. But for the minute, we're gonna get something that just came today. Jig heads. Now these are really, these are 10 grams. I've got 40 of them in a box for eight pounds, I think it cost me. But I'm gonna be showing you guys, you might not get a very good tutorial out of this, but this is a uni knot. Now I've only just learned this recently, but you know, you just gotta thread it through the eye. And once you have it like this, kind of like a regular standard knot that me and Jake used to tie. So usually me and Jake used to just, with the jig heads and that, we used to just wrap it around like this. You wrap it around about eight times and then you do it, but actually I don't know why I'm tying the jig head. I need to be tying the trace. But basically, rather than just getting it and then straight away starting to wrap, what you do is get it through the eye. And once you have it like this, you bring it back around like this to form a loop that has, you know. I don't know, the best way to show you this, I don't actually know, but like, you bring it back around so it's like that, okay. And uh, once you've got that, okay, I can't remember how I've done this now. Okay, bring it back and uh, make a little loop right there. After you've done that, you bring the line through it and you wrap it. So it's like, you wrap it five times, lubricate the knot, because you know, you can literally slide it down to anything you want, you know, and you can even like, widen it out again so like this but you know once you've got it really tight down on the hook there's really nothing you can do so i'm gonna slide this down really tight to the hook and then pull and you need to you need to get the loose end off which i hate buying this line so i'm gonna get some scissors out so on the loose end and there you go that's the uni knot it's also known as a hangman's noose but you don't really want to refer to it as a noose because you know it's an illegal knot for rope actually I, honestly i don't know what i'm talking about but there you go there's there's the trace tied on i've got the trace on now and we are going to uh, put the jig head on and there you go i'm, I'm set basically uh, but yeah we're gonna move on to the tackle now because i need to show you guys the tackle before i put it on so let's get into that. Okay, so I'm gonna get all my tackle out. Uh, literally, you will, you will have seen all these in a video yesterday, but you know, I'll show you the first few anyway. Everything's out. So, first thing we're gonna for is the weights. Now, me and Jake have not float fished for a while now, and I don't think we'll be doing it for quite a little while now. But you know, obviously, we're gonna give it a go at some point. Tons of TIDs, like I showed you these. Uh, Showed you all these in the video yesterday, and I think I'm gonna be putting some green ones on the uh, you get over there. Obviously, we've got the Ib Garcia Costa, really nice, like heavy spinner. Let's see, Ib Garcia Costa. But open this, and this is there's so much stuff in here. There's loads of hooks, uh, nice little spinner right there. Oh, uh, size 12 hooks to nylon, and there should be another pack of them there, but I bet you any money Jake stole them. Oh no, they're not. They're, they're right there. Uh, some more hooks and right there. The bag's falling. Get back there. Right, uh, some tape for if we ever need it. 
There's loads of drop shot wits in there, and also loads of traces here. More traces in there. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I also have a trace that's got some treble hooks, but I'm not going to show you that right now. Yeah, we have some pliers that are right here, in which they can be used to get, you know, hooks out of pipe. Tons of floats and tons of discharges, which you know you've seen it all before. Scissors, which I've just used. And that's all that's really in this tackle box right here. All this is, uh, my, you know, this is my favourite one out of all of them. It's angling times. Uh, it's like a box that you got with angling times. And I'm going to show you just how sick some of the stuff in here is. Uh, just, just wait till you see this. Okay, guys, now this stuff is so sick. Like, honestly, you just, it's Velcro. You open up two little tackle boxes there. And boom. Okay. Now, the first one is where all my spinners are. There's a. This one right here, cool. Got this off Wish. Then these are like the favorites, okay? So we have this one, it's got like the thread on the back of it. Not really much of a pan, it's just gold. Uh, we have another one here that's also basically just, it's the same as the last one but silver. Uh, then we have this one which is a one hook kind of, it's kind of like Jake said, it's good for macro, which you know. This is like one of my favorites. Nice pattern and the thread on the bottom. Then another cool working one. Yeah, standard stuff. Then another one that's yeah. Okay, next one. Standard, you know, like we've seen before. And this is my absolute favourite because, you know, it kind of mixes the fly aspect into it. I've only used this once and I was very much, like, you know, regretful of using it. I didn't want to use it, but I managed to not lose it. Here we go. So nice. I love this spinner. I don't even like touching it. It's, it's that cool. But yeah, there's the spinners. And now, the final part of the tackle, which I'm going to show you now. This green box. This green box contains lures, and these are really cool. So, first of all, just a minnow, basically. Okay, not nothing really that special. No coloration on the bomb. Then we've got this which is I, I did actually describe this in the video yesterday it's like a matte finish chub really cool then we've got another one that I did unbox yesterday chub yeah fair enough next there's this super like really cool looking birch nice coloration on the bottom as well so it's super like attractive for the pike uh, and finally my literally my oh I love this one this absolutely like coloration on the bottom Everything about this thing just says pike. It's so amazing. I don't think there's any way that a pike will get out of being hooked to this thing. It's so amazing. I, I just can't wait to use them. And now we're finally going to open TID. Uh, I've been wanting to open these for a little bit. Uh, I want to try something about them. I want to see, I want to see something like a pack of TIDs. Okay. You kind of just pull them up and it, yeah, they're resealable. That's cool. The bag, you can reseal it, but hang on. Okay, wait. Yeah, they do. Oh my god. <laughs> That's horrible. Okay. Yeah, they're salty. Really cool. Now, these are meant to be for bats, but I, once I, I don't know, look at that. It's kind of cool, TID, but we're going slide this under the hook. Now, what you're really meant to do with these kind of TRDs is because they're for bass. You put the jig head straight through like that and then they kind of sit like that. However, I'm going to use them like common TRDs that we use because I feel like these hooks are big enough. So you thread it through the top, thread it in as far as you can. And then it comes through and then it's there like that. And that, as you can see, looks really attractive for pike. I think if you push that further on, then that bit's kind of bad, so yeah, look how cool that looks. That is not coming off, and if the pike wants to bite onto it, um, it's getting that. So uh, maybe I might have to cut them down just a little bit, but it all depends whether they bite or not. But that's that's it. That is literally it. I've got a new setup. I've showed you guys all my tackle, and uh, I have a pike rig set up now. So, 
I'm ready for that tomorrow. Uh, me and, hopefully me and Jake. I might end up doing it myself, but if I do, it's not too much of an issue. But I will be going for pipe tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. I'm gonna put the rod back up now. If I do end up going on my own tomorrow, it'll be the first time I've ever been on my own fishing. So if I pull a 20 pounder out, I don't know what's gonna happen because I wouldn't be able to get it out. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, remember like and subscribe because I'm trying to pump out as much content as possible for you guys at the moment. And uh, this video is probably gonna take like quite a lot of time to edit. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you later. Goodbye.